Yep, I've taken the plunge and I've gone mirrorless. This is the Canon R5, my new camera body. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm somebody who doesn't like change, but I have been reluctant to go mirrorless for a while, mainly because of the viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder. Now, I've always liked the digital SLR, the fact that you can see through the lens and nice and clear, because although the live view screen on these new cameras are really useful and in many ways a great feature, they have their limitations. They can be difficult to see when it's very bright and you can't always see clearly around the edges or you can't always see some of the detail that you're looking for when you're composing your image. Now, I remember years ago, actually my brother bought a mirrorless one and I tried it out and I looked through his EVF and I wasn't impressed, you know? Uh, it was sluggish, it didn't look very good and I didn't like it one bit and so for that reason, I've been reluctant. Now, as I say, I'm not someone who doesn't like change. I love technology. I always move with the times. I have a background in electronics and I always am impressed with how technology has improved and how it changes constantly. But I usually like to wait. When you've got some something new like the mirrorless and the EVF, I usually like to wait a good while for them to improve the technology. So usually when it first comes out, it's usually the first edition and it's not always that great, but over time, these things get improved. So a lot of time has gone past. Mirrorless is uh, certainly here to stay, that's for sure. Now I've got my previous camera, I still have it actually, is the Canon 5D Mark III. I've had that for 10 years now. And when I was looking to get a new camera, not because it's broken, it still works perfectly well, but it's, it was time to get a new body. And uh, I did look at the Mark IV, the 5D Mark IV, but there wasn't a huge difference in um, improvement, really, you know? There wasn't uh, a much bigger resolution, and uh, there were a few good features, but, you know, to warrant another two to three thousand pound to buy a new body, didn't seem worth it really. And it seemed quite obvious that they were not going to make a 5D Mark V. And it seemed quite obvious that the digital SLR is coming to an end and everything is now mirrorless. So I looked at the Canon R range, of course I did. Um, now I looked at the R5 first of all, and I saw the price almost around 4,000 pounds for just the body and okay that was a no way can I afford that and I looked at the other the cheaper ones the R6 and they're all very good but most of them were around 24 megapixels pretty much the same as what you know almost the same as what the 5D Mark III I currently have has and for me uh, if I'm going to go up and make and spend quite a lot of money, I want a big improvement. And for me, megapixels is very important because I sell prints. I do landscapes and I sell prints. And for me to have more megapixels means that I can sell much bigger prints. Plus also the more megapixels you have, the more, uh, more, um, the more scope you have for cropping the image. So you can crop into the image and still retain a good high quality image that can be printed large. So for that reason, the R5 is 45 megapixels. Now that was something that was, wow, that's what I want. The other issue with the other cameras are that they're not full frame. Now the 5D Mark III is a full frame. I've been shooting now with a full frame sensor for the last 10 years or so since I've had it. No, prior to that, I had the 5D Mark I and then the 5D Mark III. So since 2007, really, I've been shooting with the full frame sensor. And I want to stick with the full frame sensor because, first of all, 
I have a 24 to 105 lens. And if I go back to a crop sensor, then I'm going to lose that wide angle. That 24 is going to become about 36. So I'm going to have to get another lens to get the wider angle. But second of all, I like full frame. Full frame, especially with that many megapixels. The, the fact that the, it's spread out over a larger sensor, it just gives you that much, much more quality, much higher quality. So I wanted to stick with full frame. I wanted more megapixels. These were the big things, and this is why I really wanted the R5. But again, 4,000 pounds, oh my God. But a friend of mine, my good friend, Melvin Nicholson, uh, I put a link up to his channel here. You should go check him out. This Melvin knows everything about photography equipment and he knows everything about where to buy it and how to get the best deals. He sent me to Panamos. Uh, their website, panamos.com, I'll put a link in the description. And he gave me a link to the R5 on Panamos and Guess how much it was? 2,800 for the body. I couldn't believe it. I said, no way, this is a joke. No, he said, it's real. I said, are they okay? Are oh, they fantastic? He said, I buy from them all the time. And basically what Panamos do, why is it so cheap? That's the biggest question. Why is it so cheap? Well, basically Panamos import them. And I think they import them from Hong Kong because when I did order this, uh, it seemed to come from Hong Kong. And it's essentially a grey import. So which means, well, that means as if where you, well, although you buy it in the UK, it gets imported from Hong Kong. Now they pay all the import fees. All the import fees are included in the price, I should say, they don't pay it. Um, the shipping, import fees, everything is all covered. You pay 2,800 for the camera and it arrives on your doorstep seven to 14 days later, which is exactly what happened. So, it's a grey import. Now what that means is that although you've bought it in the UK, you won't get a UK Canon warranty. So if anything goes wrong, you can't send it back to Canon. But, and here's the best bit, instead of getting the one year UK Canon warranty, you get a three year Panamos warranty. So basically what happens is Panamos give you their own warranty. So if anything goes wrong, instead of sending it to Canon, you send it back to Panamos, quite simply. And again, I'll say it again, instead of one year, you get three year, three year UK warranty. So that was the clincher for me. And that meant that I could get an R5. So that's exactly what I did. Now, it's just arrived. So I'm really excited about getting out there and trying it out. I'm down in uh, Dorset for a few days. I'm here to uh, scout for a for my Dorset workshops. I'm going to do some scouting to check out some locations because I haven't run one for a while because of the pandemic. Check out some existing locations and check out some new locations as well. I'm also going to try to get some um, trying to get some images for Dorset Life magazine. So that's a Good opportunity to see how the R5 performs there and also as I said I sell my pictures as wall art so I want to get some really good uh, landscape shots that I can add to my wall art collection that people can buy and in this case people will be able to buy bigger prints from the images I get from this so I'm really excited to start using this over the next few days so on initial inspection here are a few things that I like about it. First of all, <laughs> the 5D Mark III didn't have one of these types of screens, so I've been a bit behind in that respect. So it's really useful to have the screen that flips out, that turns and flips around. Now that, I'm sure, is gonna be extremely handy, especially when you're doing some like low-level shots that you can turn the screen up like this instead of having to crouch down and look through it, and which, at my age and my uh, my latter years, I should say, is becoming harder and harder to do. So it's really handy then that I can be able to do that. So I'm really glad to finally get one of these screens. On initial inspection, the electronic viewfinder is pretty impressive. And 
we'll see how it performs out in the field. So stay tuned for the next few videos in which I will be out and about using the R5 in Dorset. Okay, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to get yourself an R5 for 2800 or any other camera, they have a whole bunch of camera, camera bodies and lenses at really, really great prices. Panamos.com, link in the description. As I said, they're grey imports, but they give you their own uh, UK three-year warranty on anything that you buy. So well worth checking out. And the people at Panamos are fantastic. I will say this too, because I wanted to get this uh, at the end of the financial year for, for tax reasons. You know, £3,000 means uh, quite a big drop in my profit and saved me £1,000 in tax. So they, they, the, when I went to buy it, it went out of stock. I couldn't believe it. So I emailed them and they immediately got back to me. Oh yeah, we're working hard to get it in. And I explained my situation and they said, well, we can activate it for you now and you can pre-order it and then we'll deactivate it afterwards. Do you want to do that? Yes. So they activated it, I went on and I, I purchased and paid for it all and deactivated it. Got back in touch with me and said, right, as soon, as soon as it comes through, we'll let you know. And within a few days, I got an email saying that they're back in stock and my camera had been shipped. So really helpful people, really, really fantastic customer service. I'm really impressed. And a couple of weeks after, uh, this, they even got in touch to ask me if I'd received it okay and if everything was fine. So I think Panamos are great. Okay, so uh, as I say, check out these next few videos where I'm trying out the R5 um, here in Dorset and also further afield. After here, I'll be going back to Slovenia and I'll certainly be trying it out there too. And at some point, I'll also do a more in depth review after I've um, after I've really tried it out and got to know it, then I'll do another video and do a more in-depth review about what I like and, if anything, what I don't like. So thanks for watching. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe so you can uh, check out their videos about this. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, catch you later.